Hey guys, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan and welcome to yet another Chess Engine tutorial where we'll be focusing on perfed debugging in this tutorial and let me first tell you a little bit about what it is. First of all, perfed stands for performance test and what it does is an engine can be difficult to debug because you can really only look at the final move that it chose and if it's not legal, you obviously know you have a, a, a bug in your code. But what if one of the moves it had thought of several ply deep was illegal, but the odds of you actually getting into that specific position in an actual game is so s small. So you want to make sure that the engine is even those moves that you don't even see, but it just thought of and discarded. You want to make sure those moves are legal moves, and you also want to make sure it's not uh, missing moves that it could have made. So the way we do this is mathematicians and software developers have come up with exact numbers. For instance, we know that at searching one ply deep, there are exactly 20 chess moves from a starting position. If you search two plies deep, we know that there are exactly 400 positions. Now, when you get to three and four and five and six and seven plies deep, those numbers get hard to calculate. But people have figured out the exact number from a given position, even non-starting uh, positions. So mid-game positions, people have analyzed this. And what we do is we take our engine and we tell to search every move, not an alpha beta selective search, but just a brute force search. And we get it to search the same number of moves and we make sure that it returns the exact number of moves that the people have calculated this depth to have. So to help us out with this, uh, we will download a free program. It's called Sharper. Uh, Sharper just Google Sharper Chess, uh, Chess, and it should be the top option by Albert uh, Bertilson, and if you click on that, you can see what Sharper is. It's just basically something to help you debug a chess. So you give it a certain position, and it will calculate how many legal positions there are to any given depth. So if we click the download in the top left corner, a little zip file will download here. It's really small, just a little over 100 kilobytes. Uh, shouldn't be any problem even on slow bandwidth. Uh, just extract that zip somewhere and once it is extracted uh, I can show you just how easy the debugging process is. Alright, so if we just double click on this sharper.exe file just let me enable it here. Alright, um, what I'll just type in is print hit enter and now you can see just a console pr uh, printout of a chessboard and what we can do is say divide uh, one and what this will give you is 20 moves you can see at the bottom their nodes are 20 and each and each of the moves is divided up uh, you can see an outline for each move now if I did uh, divide uh, depth of two you can see that each move, the same list of moves, has 20 responses that can be made, bringing us to a total of 400. And if we go further, let's say divide uh, 5, you can see Sharper is really fast. It can quickly calculate that there are uh, about 4,865,609. Exactly that many moves are possible from the starting position in uh, five moves. Now this count isn't counting all the moves that, it's really just counting uh, the destination position. So for instance, if I were to move this pawn up followed by um, a seven going down and uh, those, that does not count as two moves so far. Only when we have reached a depth of seven do we count that as a move in perfed. 
and perfect testing always it follows all the rules when castling is and is not allowed and passants. However, it does not uh, pay attention to threefold repetition or to the 50 move rule. So it is not testing those things, which is actually uh, just as good. Um, and so what we will be doing is we will start our engine off in the starting position and we will create an algorithm just to run through every single possibility. We'll start off at a depth of one and we should get 20 moves. We'll have a little counter. Every time a move is made, it adds one and it prints off the results in the end. Then what we will do is we will uh, set the depth greater to two and three and four. Now, at some point, chances are there are going to be bugs. I have not debugged this engine yet, so I expect a lot of bugs in our code. Now, when we search, let's say, seven ply deep, and all of a sudden we see, okay, our count is off by a thousand. Where is our mistake? This is where this divide function comes in so nice. Because what we can do is we can look at each move and see how many results there are for each one. And then what we can do is take our engine, set it to each of these positions, so make B1C3, for instance, and then count how many positions. If this is all correct, we know every move followed after B1C3 is good. And then we can narrow it down. Let's say we ended up with H2H4. There's a problem after that. And we keep narrowing it down. So what we would then do is say, uh, for instance, in this case, H2H4. Um, whoops. Oh, and now it's not working. Something was a little off there. Um, uh, just let me add the word force there, and H2H4, that's usually useful, print. Uh, force, what it does is, this is, can be used as a chess engine, and force says, don't make a response move. All right, so here we go. Now that move is made. Now what we do is we divide it. We had divided it to a depth of five. Now we divide it to a depth of four, and we'll look through each of these moves until we narrow it down to a certain move and we can look at, okay, that was an en passant move. Okay, and it was in this situation. Now, why isn't it working correctly? And we can narrow in our debugging process with this divide. So this should be really, really helpful. And once we get our engine solidly working, then we can start incorporating a UCI protocol so that our engine will work in a uh, program like Arena where other engines can interact with it. So I hope this has made sense. If it not, we'll be actually debugging it and taking you through at least some of the bugs and some of the techniques for debugging and uh, you'll catch on real quick. All right, until next time, enjoy Java.